I want to help us to uh, think and meditate tonight upon the Lord with uh, several scriptures, uh, putting several scriptures together from the book of Hebrews. And to to preface these things, remember that this uh, letter is written to a, a church they were, they were Hebrews, they were Jewish, Jewish believers who were uh, tending back towards uh, the law, the law of Moses. And so we have in this book a lot of comparisons, comparing uh, Jesus with the high priest and comparing Moses with Jesus and Joshua with Jesus and the angels with Jesus. So there's also a comparison made several times between the offerings that were made in the temp- in the tabernacle and the offering that Jesus made. And it was obvious that there were multiple sacrifices, thousands if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions. Uh, on the Day of Atonement, there were hundreds of sacrifices just on the one day that happened every year. So he had a morning sacrifice, he had an evening sacrifice. He had sacrifices when they did this sin and when they did that sin. And it was, so it was, it was a constant reminder. The, the Holy Spirit tells us that the Day of Atonement was a, a constant reminder of their sins. It wasn't a reminder of forgiveness. It didn't remind them that they'd been purged. It reminded them that they had sinned. And so the Holy Spirit makes a, makes a point of this, that the, while there are a lot of likenesses between uh, Jesus and the tabernacle, Jesus and the law, There are a lot of things that are different because all of the sacrifices that were made continually, year by year, as the Holy Spirit Spirit said, none of them took away sin. But Jesus made one sacrifice. He did. Jesus didn't make a sacrifice for every sin that was committed. He didn't make a sacrifice for every person to be forgiven. He made one sacrifice. That's in contrast to the law. And one primary reason for that is because Jesus' one sacrifice was effective. It took away sin. So Hebrews 7, uh, 27. Who needeth not daily, here's the contrast, as those high priests who offer up sacrifice first for his own sins, then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Jesus offered himself one time. He was received by God, that took away sin, and it was done. Sin was taken away. Uh, Chapter 9, verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now the high priest under the tabernacle, under the law, he would enter once a year. So he entered multiple times, but he he came out after he entered. Jesus entered once, he hadn't come back out. He's in heaven. Uh, Hebrews 9, uh, verse 26. For then uh, he must have offered, he must have suffered, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. The singularity of his, of his offering, of his sacrifice is being, it's, the Holy Spirit's making a big point of this. It's like, you know, the, the letter as a whole, the book of Hebrews, is like an argument. The Holy Spirit is arguing for Jesus. It's not that he's arguing against Moses, but with regards to coming before God, it is an argument against Moses, but he, he's arguing for Jesus. Jesus offered once. Hebrews 9.28, for, for Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So in this verse, his first appearing is contrasted with his second appearing yet to happen. His first appearing had to do with sin. He came, he, his second will be without sin. Not, not that Jesus sinned either time. That's not what he's saying. It's that his first time he came to deal with sin. The second time he's not coming to deal with sin. He's coming to get his bride. Amen. He will come without sin. Regard, he's done. Jesus is done dealing with sin, Amen. except for you know we we uh, if we uh, if any man sin, uh, we have an advocate with the Father. I want so he's done with putting away sin. I should say I should say it that way. 
So Jesus, Jesus' sacrifice, his offering for sin was so effective that he isn't, he doesn't even suffer again when we come, when we sin and come and confess. He, he acts as a high priest then. So he doesn't have to spill more blood. Right. He took away sin at, as a whole. Right. Sin in totality. All the way back to Adam's sin. He t- I mean, we, and this, is, this was a very, this was actually a, a judicial transaction. He took away all sin. Not, now there's a, uh, there's, uh, doctrine out there called uh, limited atonement that Jesus only suffered for the sin that would be forgiven. But he suffered for sin. Amen. The, the, the Holy Spirit moved Isaiah to say that he, uh, um, for, the, the, for transgression he was smitten. See, he, uh, the Holy Spirit said that he um, hung on him the iniquity of us all. It was so effective and so thorough mm-hmm. that he only had to do it one time. Amen. There's other, uh, Romans chapter 6 talked about Jesus dying unto sin once. 1 Peter 3 talks about he once suffered for sin. He's not, he's, he doesn't suffer again. He doesn't die again. Amen. He has um, he's been so effective and so so thorough that we can now, even though we're in the world and even though we're in the body, we can now have a clean conscience before God. Amen. His, his sacrifice and offering for sin was so effective that the accuser of the brethren had to be cast out. There wasn't any more place for him Amen. because his offering for sin was was so effective and so thorough that he had to leave. His, his, uh, his offering and sacrifice for sin is so effective that when, when Satan accuses you, and he, can, he doesn't have to lie to Aaron to bring something up. He can bring, bring something up to Aaron that Aaron really did. But his sacrifice and, and offering is so effective that I can say truth and still have a clean conscience. Because he died once for sins. He's a sacrifice for sins forever that we might come to God and be accepted and have a clean conscience. Now what, 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 more, what more do we need? What more, what more has to be done? It is, it's God that justifies. And that, that's how he has done it, through the one offering of the, of the body of Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this offering and for the things that you have revealed about it. We're grateful, Lord, that you have not left us to uh, surmise um, in, this, in this regards to the, the death of Christ, uh, but you sent the Holy Spirit and the apostles and the prophets to open it up and to reveal it to us. And we pray, Lord, as we come to this table, uh, to remember Jesus, to meditate upon these things, that you would give us grace to be uh, productive in our memories and in our, in our thinking. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.